welcome back to our series on how to fill a fountain pen. And so this is where things are going to get a little bit more interesting because what we're going to do today is fill an eyedropper. You've got an Opus 88 fountain pen here. This is a Japanese style eyedropper fountain pen and it's probably the most, shall we say, straightforward um, eyedropper style fountain pen that holds a ton of ink and also requires the least amount of maintenance on your part in that you don't have to seal the threads of the pen with silicone grease like you will with a, a cartridge converter pen that I'm going to show you in a moment. This pen is intended to be used as an eyedropper. It's the only way you can fill it. That's how it's designed. And you'll notice that every everywhere there's a seal, there's also a uh, um, o-ring that creates a gasket to prevent the ink from leaking out. There's also an o-ring at the end of the at the end of the nib unit that threads in and out. This particular Opus 88 fountain pen has been fitted with a Platinum 3776 nib that I retrofitted using a custom nib housing from Flexible Ink Fact F Flexible Nib Factory. The link that I'll put in the video notes. You should um, th that should be more of a a topic for experienced users. Don't don't start out trying to create Franken pens like I've done here. I mean, this pen sh will ship with a perfectly good Yovo stainless steel number eight nib, number six nib, and it will come ready to go. So um, I just wanted to explain because I knew I would get some comments as to why there's a platinum nib in this particular pen. But because these Opus 88 pens um, hold so much ink, they can also be very easy to fill. I sometimes will take a smaller ink bottle like this um, 10 ounce Urban bottle or an ink sample and just pour the ink into the barrel. I won't do that on video because I'm going to make a mess because I'm trying to do this while looking through a phone um, as I film. But ordinarily what you'll do is you'll take a glass eyedropper that's included with most pens. I've got dozens of these things. Suck up some ink from the bottle and just fill the pen that way. As you will see, this pen is going to hold a ton of ink. I mean, four, maybe five ounces, probably somewhere around half this little 10 ounce bottle. All right, as you get close to the top, I'm not going to overfill. What you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to seal it up. You feel the O-ring get tight. And then with this particular pen, the Japanese style eyedropper, what I like about it is that it has a shut off valve incorporated into the pen. The, the, um, the barrel end cap will twist like it would on a piston filler, but it doesn't fill the pen. What it does is it, pulls away a rod that holds a valve up against the section. And that valve allows the ink to flow to the nib. Or alternatively, you know, if you're traveling and you're not writing and you don't want ink from the barrel to flow to the nib, through the feed into the nib, you can close the valve, which prevents leakage. The thing with eyedropper pens that don't have this valve system is that the ink expands <clears throat> as the, the ink warms from the heat of your hand. There's nothing, there's no internal filler, there's no internal piston mechanism, there's no converter to insulate the ink from the heat of your hand. So as you write with an eyedropper pen, the ink will expand and you may experience some burping, as the pen, especially as the pen gets low and there's more air in the barrel. Um, Japanese style eyedroppers prevent that to some extent. I mean, you may still get a little bit if there's, if there's no ink in the, if there's very low ink level. But uh, you're not going to have <clears throat> big spills if you take this plane on an air if you take this pen on an airplane, or if you've got it sitting in a bag when you're going to and from a hot car on your way to work, and things like that. Um, you can read more. I'll post a link um, to a post on the blog about how to fit, how to use these Japanese style eyedropper pens. But I did think it would be handy to have a video showing really how to um, how to fill them because it, it's tricky. It's not it's not hard, but it's it's something that you you've got to think more about as opposed to um, a cartridge converter or a piston filler. And there's also the capability of it making a mess. 
So when you fill an eyedropper, it's going to take some time for the ink to work its way down through the nib, through the feed to the nib, um, where the pen's going to be ready to write. I, I like to open the the valve a little bit, give it a couple shakes, cap the pen, and just let it sit for a few minutes. So this is a ten ounce uh, bottle of ink, and you can see. Um, you can sort of see it's about it's about half a um, little little less than half empty. Um, Urban Poussière de Lune, one of my favorite um, my favorite dusky purple inks. All right, which brings me to the next project, and that is how to eyedropper a Franklin Kristoff fountain pen. Um, the same thing will apply to most acrylic um, cartridge converter pens. Um, when you're thinking about whether or not to make a homemade eyedropper fountain pen. The first thing you want to be sure of is that there's no metal components that are going to come into contact with the ink. You know, liquid, metal, other than maybe titanium, don't react well together. You're going to get some corrosion, you're going to get some rust that's going to cause problems with the ink flow. So if you're going to eyedropper a pen that's not sold as an eyedropper, but is eyedropper capable, you're also going to need to either use an O-ring or put something around the threads to ensure that ink doesn't work its way up there and leak into your pen case or onto your hands when you're writing, because it will. And to do that, you're going to have to apply, I, I typically use silicone grease, which you can buy from most fountain pen, you can buy from most fountain pen supply stores. I don't have any at the moment in our shop. Um, I don't sell that many eyedropper cap capable pens. So this is more of an educational, but silicone educational video. But silicone grease is really just a clear, you can't really see it. It's a clear, um, a clear material that's used kind of to seal, to seal pipes really for plumbing purposes so liquid doesn't reach out. And you just take a tiny dab and brush it around, um, brush it around the threads. You don't need a lot of it. You just need enough to clog the threads so that no ink can work their way through. No ink can work its way through. And I think you can see that. I mean, it, it just you just want to get the ink down into the grooves. Um, and put this put this aside for the moment. And you're going to want to do the same thing around the threads at the base of the nib unit because there's two points at which the uh, the pen can leak. around the barrel and around the nib. So you've got that and that'll work. And then you just kind of thread the, thread the nib back in to the section. Check and see if it's aligned. Wipe any excess silicone grease off the section. All right, so now that's ready. You have that, it's ready to go. You can put your silicone grease aside, you know, eat it off your hands, and now it feels basically the same as the Opus 88, only you don't have the Japanese eyedropper shutoff valve. That's something that's important to keep in mind because you will, you know, as the ink level gets lower, you get more air in the barrel, the ink warms up from the heat of your hand, it'll cause that air to expand and it will push air, it'll push ink out the front of the nib and maybe cause it to leak or burp out onto the page as the ink level gets low. That doesn't mean your eyedropper is malfunctioning. Um, in, in ye old days, when all fountain pens were eyedroppers, that's how you knew your pen was low on ink when the barrel wasn't transparent. So it's a natural thing to happen if it does happen while you're, while you're writing with an eyedropper, whether it's due to a change in air pressure, um, a change in heat, or simply due to the pen being low on ink. Um, it's just one of those things that you kind of accept as a risk, especially when you're making a homemade eyedropper. So the ink that I'm going to use to fill this pen is going to be, hmm, what should we use here? You know, I think I'm just going to go with, um, some Areshizuku Asagao because it's such a, it's such a favorite of mine. Um, first of all, you'll want to clear the Poussière de Lune out of the, out of the eyedropper. You don't want to mix inks. You want to keep that color, although purple and blue, you're not going to get much interaction between them. This pen 
Fill this an eyedropper. It's going to hold a ton of ink. So that barrel is almost filled all the way up. Flush that out. Fill that up. We have a little, I think that'll be fine. Look at that. Beautiful. And that is how you fill eyedropper fountain pens, both Japanese style and, you know, your kind of homemade standard style. I hope this was helpful. Um, check the show notes, check the, not the show notes, the video notes for links to blog posts and other, I mean, if you want to consult a written resource before, um, before you uh, attempt this yourself, I'll post links to relevant posts um, in the video notes. And so thanks for joining me and hope to see you soon.